from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello and welcome everybody to this week's edition of the Wow Report, where we count down the top 10 topics of the week that made us go wow. Wow. I, wow. Wow. I am Fenton Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder, joined by our chief creative officer, Tom Campbell. And uh, James St. James, editor I'm of here. the Wow Report Literary Sensation. I'm not going to do a preamble because there's so much to talk about this week. We are going to jump straight into the countdown at number 10. I can't believe all three of us have watched this. Anyway, take it away. <laughs> this never Num happens. It never, and not once in the five years have right. we ever all been on the same page about something. Number 10. Tom. Number 10. I don't know if we're on the same page, but we all want to talk about, and we all watch the Gilded Age, the new Julian Fellows, Mr. Downton Abbey series that just premiered on HBO, HBO Max, whatever their brand is, it's very confusing. Um, and it is set in the 1880s New York. It is the American equivalent to Downton Abbey in terms of kind of what was going on, you know, across the pond and the robber barons and the rich money and the old New York. And, you know, I told you guys, I just watched the Roosevelt documentary, which was around the same time, too. So and I know and I, I feel humble here with with um, in, in the face of Jane St. James, who thinks he's living in 1880s New York. <laughs> so I will go on. I'm just going to give my my top line review, which is like, I kind of loved it. Well, and I'm looking what forward I imagine to more. that you loved about it, Tom, was that it was like the diner scene in Tick, Tick, Boom, where every three seconds it was another Broadway star popping up. It is <laughs> nothing but nothing but Broadway stars. Audrey McDonald and Kelly O'Hara and on and on and on. On and on and on and on. The casting is amazing. Christine Baranski is, uh, is a hoot. I'm loving her. Fenton, what was your thought? I prefer Downton Abbey. I thought this is a it this is more lavish. This is obviously much more expensive. Um, but I felt just being picky wicky, I just thought it felt flat and sort of the script was kind of like I just thought they were reading their lines. I was I was having a hard time with it. Well, it I'll tell you something. That, that it, it does, you know, you would think that because we're dealing with the nouveau riche versus the old money crowd, that there would be a lot of pow and a lot of, uh, you know, energized and, and it would be a lot more garish, perhaps, and probably not as genteel as Downton Abbey, you know, but it does, it was a little flat. I agree with you there. Um, it is, it's the thinly veiled, a little context here, it's the thinly veiled real story of what happened when Alva Vanderbilt tried to storm society and she needed to get Miss, the Mrs. Astor to come to her house. And it, when she came to her house, she would be bending the knee. And then Alva, eventually Alva did get Mrs. Astor. She tricked her into coming to the house. Spoiler and, alert, and James. Spoiler alert. <laughs> what? Spoiler well, yeah, alert I mean, the that, 1880s. Spoilers. Yeah, that, that's basically the story of, of what this is. And even though there is a Mrs. Astor and a Mrs. Vanderbilt on the show, uh, that's basically what we're following, the, the, the script we're following. What a fantastic story, though. I mean, you know, to have built yourself a big fuck-off mansion on Fifth Avenue, which is glorious. I mean, I love every visual detail. I'm lapping it up. It's just fabulous. And built yourself this great big mansion and then thrown this great big party for everyone to come. And no one oh, comes. I, mean, comes. I, just, I felt that. I felt that. <laughs> I, I, How many times have we all had birthday parties where nobody <laughs> comes? And Karen Never, Coon, James. Like, <laughs> the crowd. Um, I'm the old. I'm old uh, LA though. The um, I, I do have to say, you mentioned it briefly. The production value is out of this world. The use of CGI. I'm imagining. I've been online reading. A lot of it was shot in Troy, New York, which was at mm. one point at that period of time like one of the richest cities in the world. It was like Dubai, <laughs> and they have all of these um of uh, these 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 killer things that the house is is different rooms. You know the kitchen, the ballroom, the upstairs, the bedroom. They they film them in all different homes because that was part of the charm of Downton Abbey was you knew they were in a real place. It was real locations, yeah. and this you're like. At first, I thought, well, this is a set. And I'm like, no, this can't be a set. This is like the most lush thing I've ever seen, the scale and the beauty. 
So on that level, just, you know, whatever. And, and I get it. It's not quite Downton Abbey. We don't have the accents. And we know the Julian Fellows playbook so well now. Yeah. And it is, and you do kind of connect the dots like, oh, um, Christine Baranski is Maggie Smith and right. Cynthia Nixon. Who, hap- who is plays sort of uh, the the Mrs. Uh, the, the Croydon Croydon the woman who is like sort of the, the spinster the, maid basically yeah the spinster right. maid and, and of course, the only thing I'll say have- is that I saw Cynthia Nixon a couple years ago on Broadway in Little Foxes where she and Laura oh, Linney she would was, switch she, they were switching yes. yes. And I think Cynthia Nixon plays this time period really well and really convincingly. So really good. But I also want to say that in, at the end of the pilot of uh, Downton Abbey, you had two men falling into bed together, which was a big, huge surprise. And in this, you have the same thing happen. Yes. So he is sort of copying himself a little bit. I did want to say very quickly that the main the main girl who comes to the house, the um, the, who, the cousin who is yes, the outsider. That is pushy. That's Louise Jacobson, who is a gummer. I don't know if you knew that. That is Meryl Streep's daughter. And I don't think that she's that good, but maybe she'll grow on me. I don't know. I thought she was a little flat. I do want to say that I always have to fall in love with someone on the show to, to keep watching the show. I know and who there, it is. I know there are two is. people. There's Harry Richardson, who is the Russell boy. I love him. And there's also a guy named Ben Arliss, who is Jack the Footman who is downstairs and I loved him as well. Very so expressive will- face. He has a lot of, he's the Irish butler. He's the Irish chauffeur yes. rather from Downton. Oh, is he? Yes, yes, yes. And he's just adorable. So for those two reasons, I will watch the show. Harry Richardson looks like he escaped from One Direction. He, I feel yes, like Harry yes. Style. He is a little and, boy bander, isn't he? He is so yes, cute. And, I mean, in a, in a, you know, and this is so picky because, you know, like, he does, he knows his thing and he's done it all and done, you know, where you've got the servants scurrying around and being sort of witty with one another, but also uh-huh. knowing their place and scurrying upstairs. And it's just, it's sort of deja vu. And I think it's very unfair for me to critique it in that way. Um, well, I think, but it might grow on us. It might be, that it will. there's a lot oh. of exposition that had to be done in that first episode. Yeah. So exactly. I can't I wait we'll to be- see more. Same time, same place. Next week, we'll be talking about <laughs> the Gilded Age. Number nine, James. Number nine. I wanted to revisit and just like that, the Sex in the City reboot on um on Does that HBO. mean you've been watching it? I have been watching it religiously. And I've got to say that it's just wretched. It is just horrible. It is I thought you said that last time. Terrible. The acting, the dialogue. Without Samantha, there's no bite. The costumes don't pop without Pat Fields. It is just awful, but the consensus on Twitter seems to be that we're all hate-watching it, and we're loving to hate-watch it, and we can't wait for each episode to hate-watch it some more. And um, it's... I Have you guys been watching it? Have you been seeing any of it? I no. slowed down on my watching, which is a nice way to say I stopped watching it. But I do yeah. think you're absolutely right. I think in this, we're desperate for connection. I'm going to talk about that later, another piece. And this is something we all have an opinion about. We oh. all have a history with. We all think we are sex in the city experts, and they should be doing this and doing that. So yeah. it is, you know, it, it's hate watching. It's 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 It seems rife for the... Um, you know, whatever, all of our opinions. Well, the the, the thing is, the big problem is, is they're trying to sort of reimagine it as this sort of woke series with all these different new characters that are shoehorned in and none of them are quite working. There's this character, Che Diaz, who is a non-binary um, comedian played by Sarah Ramirez. And um, as much as we love non-binary representation, the character is just there to be woke and it's just there to um there there's a in in the second episode uh they're on stage and they're giving a a comedy routine and there's nothing but there's not one joke in the comedy routine routine it is just exposition to explain what non-binary is and it goes on for 10 fucking minutes and it goes and it is just for for no reason at all except to be woke and they are having an affair with Miranda and Miranda's wig is a whole character unto itself. This shake and go gray wig that is just awful. Drag race aficionados are having uh, <laughs> apoplexy watching it. Um, Blake just also- typed on the chat that it's an Andy Warhol wig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Totally, totally. It, it's very bad. Um, there's a new character played by Sarita Chaudhry, and she's an Indian woman, and she's sort of fabulous. And she's um, Carrie's real estate agent, and she's sort of part of the new group now. There's two black women who feel like it's the 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 conversation has always been it's these four white women living in this Caucasian New York that doesn't exist and why are there no black characters? So they tried to rectify it by putting these two black characters in that don't make any sense and they don't matter to the plot and they're just sort of like show up every episode and to say we've got black characters. And I will so say this. I'm, I will know. say this, that you don't have this kind of negative reaction if you don't start with something that really matters to people just because yeah. we know and we're we're we, we make tv shows some hit some don't hit with all the best intentions and there's incredibly talented people attached in front of the camera behind the camera the rumor online is there will be a second season i have to imagine the engagement is incredible and yeah. maybe they'll get a second chance and i gotta tell you it's harder than ever to be funny around sex and Jen, you know, like it's a really touchy subject. I don't, I don't envy them. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I have a quick fix in my mind, but maybe they'll get another season to work it out. But it is, it is, it is fun to just eat well, it like red we've meat. We've always been, you know, are you a Carrie? Are you a Miranda? Are you a Charlotte? Yeah. I mean, that was always like that's part of our culture. <laughs> yeah. But I yeah. have a bit of a theory, which is that it isn't really about watching things anymore. It's about engaging with them, and so really, it doesn't matter yeah. whether you as, like as it or hate it. As long as you're getting the social media, as long are as you, you engaged? are trending every week yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. And just one and second, think, Blake. Blake, will you make your face shown, our, our millennial producer? Hi. What do you think of of uh, and, as, uh, as, uh, and suddenly? So what's the name of the show? And suddenly, last summer, there was Sex in the City. <laughs> and just like that, what do you think? I love it. I mean, I don't think it's any worse than either of the movies, which I didn't really think were that bad. Oh, anyway, God. The, um, Lawrence, listen, listen. My and I love. Man. The, this latest episode, there were not one but two dicks. Even though were, one might have been fake. Two penises. Yes, Harry's penis, which was a major shocker. It was a schlong like you've never seen. And then the downstairs neighbor, who is just as hot as can be, his towel fell off in front of Carrie, and we got the full dong. Well, yeah. now you've got me back on track. I'm going <laughs> to catch up tonight. I just thought, you know, it's again. I want we we have varying opinions about ourselves. I just want to make sure that everybody hears, and we're we're talking about it. And you know, I wish everybody involved the best of luck. But it is, we have such deep feelings about it. It's it's yeah. kind of crazy, and and my skew a little into the negative too. But you know, that's where I live. All right, well, let's move on. Um, you can watch and just like that on HBO, as you can also watch The Gilded Age on HBO, and you will also be able to watch Number Eight. Number Eight on HBO. You can't watch it just yet. Um, it's coming to HBO. Here's the story. I'm in New Zealand, Tom. I'm just I'm downstairs from you. But today, <laughs> I was at the Sundance Film, film Festival. Oh, yeah. The, the film festival this year has been kind of canceled. Well, not canceled. Gone online, remote. And so instead of in person, it's, it's a whole online experience. And what's amazing is you can actually just go and buy a ticket. And I bought a ticket to see um, a film um, called Navalny, a documentary about Alexei, Alexei Navalny, who is a Russian dissident who has been giving Putin a horrible, horrible time. Well, have and, you spoken uh, about him before? You've talked we have, about him before, yes. yes. He, did the, he has this fabulously popular YouTube channel and he's got like six and a half million subscribers. You might also have heard of him because he was poisoned. Yeah. in Siberia. And he got on the plane to leave Siberia, became deathly ill. The plane made an emergency landing. He was taken off the plane. Long story short, went to Germany where he was treated and recovered. He was poisoned with this thing called Novichok, which is a very clever poison that leaves your body after a certain amount of time once it's killed you. So if they use Novichok on you and you die, they can't autopsy. They, they can't find they it. They autopsy, and you're like, "Oh, he died of natural causes." Uh. But the twist is, I mean, it was a big headline story because he survived and he went back to Russia. The big twist is, the plan would have worked perfectly had the plane not made the emergency landing. So he became ill on the flight, and they thought he would just die on the flight. 
but the plane <clears throat> diverted and landed. So he got medical help in time. And that's how he survived. This is an amazing documentary. Really but now, powerful. But by going back to Russia, which seems sort of counterintuitive to me, if the president of the of Russia is trying to kill you, why would you go back? But it James, worked in his favor because now everybody knows. Too famous to kill. Too famous too to fam kill. Yeah. yeah. But also, James, unlike you and me, he's profoundly committed to his cause and <laughs> is not going to step down. Honey, if someone poisoned me, I would just run away. I would just be like, okay, I'm going to stay over here. Well, I, would not have been in, I would not have been in Siberia in the first place. Thank you very well, much. <laughs> here's the thing. This is what is, this, but the film goes even deeper. So I didn't know this, but I will share it with you. They found a guy who was in Austria and he just did data hacking. And he would just buy data from people. And he bought data from, he got the phone records of the, there's one place in Russia where they make this poison. He got the phone records in the weeks leading up to the attack. He then managed from the phone records to get their driver's license numbers and addresses. Then he managed to get flight manifests. Long story short, he managed to piece together who bought the poison, who took it on the plane, who delivered it to, oh, uh -huh. to him. It gets even better because then when he doesn't die, what they do is they call up all the poisoners. Alexei Navalny calls up the poisoners and say, <laughs> oh, hi, I'm calling to see why you killed me. And then <laughs> most of them hang up, but one scientist, they prank him and they say, oh, I'm from the Politburo of blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm doing a report. Can you tell me what went wrong? And the scientist says, yeah, I know. He was supposed to die, but the plane diverted. <laughs> the whole thing. It gets even better because they don't release that data, that call, until Putin gave a press conference and said, oh, you know, this is just an attention-seeking citizen. Uh, he won't even say his name. Putin won't say his name. And he says, you know, if someone had tried to poison him, they would have just killed him. You know, they wouldn't have, like, and then he drops the phone call. Navalny drops the phone call of him talking to his would-be assassin, who's like, "Yeah, it kind of went wrong." It's jaw-dropping. It, it, it's it's. I think this could be the Oscar uh, winner for 2023. You know. Well, now when is it premiering, and when do we get to see it? And all yeah, it's that? coming to HBO in 2022. This later this year. The date hasn't mm -hmm. been released. And who is yet. the who is the director? Who did who did it? The director is, he did that Robbie Robertson documentary, which apparently is also oh. really good. Daniel Ra, he's a Canadian, just 29 okay. years old. One, one, phenomenal film. one quick question. Is, are there reenactments? And is there ever a moment where the stewardess takes her ring, opens it, and pours the poison into <laughs> the glass and then puts the ring back on? Very good point, Tom, because actually what is so incredible is that there are no reenactments because you don't need reenactments. Like when he goes back to Russia, they are watching live of all the people on the phone have their cell phones out. It's all streaming live everywhere all the time. And he does such a brilliant job of this whole thing feels so immersive and present without any re need for any reenactments. Well, it's but Tom also brings up another point. How did the poison get into, into his drink or whatever? How do we know anything, any details? I believe they put it in his tea, but they also, there's a, a, a slight subplot where they, they put it in his clothes. They delivered clothes um, that have been impregnated with it after they um, interfered with the laundry. And there's a hilarious moment in the phone call where uh, Navani's asking the guy, he's saying, well, what did you do with um, his the victim's clothes? And they said, oh, well, they the police came and took them and cleaned them. And he was like, well, why did they clean them? And he was like, well, to get rid of the pro pro poison. And he said, well, any areas in particular? He said, yes, the underwear. And yeah. he's like, any area in the underwear? He's like, yes, the crotch. So it seems like they, they said by the dick poisoning. Dick poisoning. I mean, it's, it's, the whole thing is you cannot make it up. It is. And then, of course, when that came out, um, Putin and, and his sort of uh, uh, propagandists tried to say that Navalny had a, a Freudian fixation with his crotch area and was just looking for attention. So really how your dick can make you sick story at 11. <laughs>
<laughs> so, all right, we're going to take a quick break. Um, just before we do, I got to tell you, watch Getting Curious with JVN. It is streaming on Netflix now. It is a fantastic series. In each episode, Jonathan Van Ness gets to pursue one of his obsessions and curiosities. And it's hilarious and fun. And there really is no one with a greater sense of yes. curiosity. And it's based than... on the podcast with the same title, Getting Curious, which if you love that, you're going to love this series. And if you yeah. haven't seen that, tune in. It's really remarkable. He's a remarkable talent. Absolutely. Blake, do you have a question? I do. I do. Um, Tuesday is the Lunar New Year. And 2021 is the year of the ox. What is 2022? Oh, what? I know this. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll have the answer for you right after the break. You're listening to Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. And welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom Campbell, James St. James, and Blake. We're counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow. And Blake, you had a question for us. I did. Um, Tuesday is the Lunar New Year. It's the start of the Lunar New Year. 2021 was the year of the ox. 2022 is the year of the what? Maybe I'm just really lonely for my pets, but I think it's the year of the kitty cat. I think it's the year of the monkey, but it might be a snake or something. It feels like I just read this somewhere, but I, now I'm, it's, I'm completely blanking. I'm going to go with a rat. Year of the rat. It's Thomas closest. It's the year of the tiger. Meow. Oh. Meow. Meow. <laughs> All right, let's carry on with our countdown. We've reached number seven. Number seven. All right, I am late to this train, and I am I lied about being on this train because my my friend Brett McLaughlin Leland, who is an incredible composer and artist, has a lot of stuff on Drag Race. People see him there. He is working on. He does the music for a show, a hit show that was on Comedy Central. Now it's HBO Max, like everything else streaming, and it's called The Other Two. We may have even talked about it. It's a hilarious, hilarious comedy. You'll, Molly Shannon plays the mother. She has a son who becomes like Justin Bieber overnight, like a YouTube star. He's like a young guy and just like sweet and guyless. And he has an older brother and sister who cannot get their shit together. And they are the other two. And I just, I watched a little of the first episode and I just never got into it. Not because it was bad, but just because, I don't know, I, I, I'd eaten a pizza and I had to fall asleep. I, I am, you know, in my hotel trying to catch up on things. I watched the entire second season where in the first season, it's all about the younger brother becoming Justin Bieber. And, and then my, and the second season, Molly Shannon becomes a hit talk show host called Pat. And it's all like, <laughs> give yourself a, give yourself a pat on the back. And they, they have, and the audience recites, they make it's hard. It's, it's 30 rock. Like it makes fun of everything and everyone and still manages to create moments where you feel for these people, where you relate for these people. He's gay. The son, he, you know, he meets, um, he meets a, he has a boyfriend like, like th also I love the pacing because they're not losers. Like things are starting to happen for them, but you know, they get a job or they manage or he gets to act and everything goes wrong. I, I can't recreate it. It is a joy to watch the other two. On and HBO. where is it? Cause I, I keep seeing people talk about it, but I don't, I don't know anything HBO, about it. HBO max. It was on comedy central to begin with, which is why we would never go like what, what, what straight people go to comedy. And both central. seasons are on HBO max, both seasons. And I'm going to watch number one. I just figured I would try to catch up. I called uh, Brett the other day. I said, I have a terrible confession to make. I never watched it. It's been out for a couple of years. I go, I've never watched your show. I watched the second season. I was blown away that they make fun of Scientology. They make fun of, uh, it's just again lovingly well, you know, it's funny because there's uh, there's search party which is something that people talk about too and they say how funny and you know meta and hysterical that is and so i need to catch up on both of these and yeah. i think is there is there a boy for me to love is there is there are there people for me to fall in love with i think you'll love the the, the, the lead guy but it's just they and and the, by the way the guy who plays the justin bieber brother is so adorable because he's so guileless but so sweet you know kind of the the, the the he says all the right things he also he can't the end of the first ep, first season i know from flashbacks he finally sings on the video music awards and he can't sing he's like hugely famous and he bombs <laughs> and he, and so so the first episode this is a spoiler but the first so he so the series ends with him leaving show business like his sister was going to manage him and she managed him for an hour but nobody knew and so then then he goes to NYU and he's crushing it. And by the end of the first episode, he's quit NYU. And they're all like, he can't sing. So he's like, okay, 
your, your new brand, your new brand is you're a singer who doesn't sing like Rihanna, like Justin Timberlake. You're just, you know, so they, they, he gets a fashion line. He does everything that the celebrities do. He just doesn't sing a note. I mean, he's a singer. <laughs> That's just a little taste. Ten, ten things like that happen in an episode. Well, that's the other two, right? Streaming yep. on HBO. It's very. It's an HBO show. I tell you, it is. They're back, James. Number six. What have you got? I first? went to the movie theater over the weekend. I, what? I did. I, I go for the first show. I do the ten a.m. show that nobody goes to, so I'm alone Good. in the theater. And Don't I went have to a go. Job? To, Don't you have to be at work the ten a.m. I do this on a Saturday, Fenton. Oh. Hey, if he's talking about it on the show, it's part exactly. of the Exactly. I can go to as many movies as I want as long as I talk about them on the radio. And you have to pay me to do it. <laughs> anyway, I went to go see the biggest movie on the planet. I went to go see Scream, which is, I want to be very clear about this. It's a requel. It is not a sequel or an equal. It is not a reboot or a remake. It is a requel. What is a requel? It means that it has many of the elements of the original uh, movie, that the things that made it a hit. Because lately, the last seven or eight of them have sort of strayed <laughs> from the, the what made them great, what made them so magnificent. <laughs> and what we have is we have, once again, we have a girl. It opens with a girl alone in a house. And she gets a phone call from a straight, mysterious stranger who says, do you want to play a game? And then they banter back and forth. And, of course, he's in the house and he kills her. Spoiler alert. And then there's a group of teenagers who are friends. And one of them is probably the ghost face killer. And you know that from the outset. And then there's um, all sorts of... Uh, uh, Oh, and then all of a sudden, Nev Campbell shows back up again, the original girl from the first one, and Courtney Cox Arquette and David Arquette, or Courtney Cox, I guess. And they're they're all back for again for the seventh or eighth time. And um, uh, lots of shenanigans happen. Lots of people get stabbed. Um, and then there's a big party at the end, of course, and everybody gets picked off at the party one by one until there's the reveal. And it's very formulaic. And I don't know that I can actually... Um, uh, advise you to see this i don't know whether it's something you want to see but if it's on cable late at night of course uh, yes i would say do it um when Casey, will they do a halloween screen crossover when will jamie lee curtis appear in a screen recall? well it would it, it would be fun to have michael myers versus ghostface versus jason versus freddie like have them all together and do sort of a drag race where they all have to like you know lip sync for their lives or stab for their or do something you know but so would you skip work to go see the movie? That's my question. <laughs> would you no, risk COVID case, to see this movie? I would not. No. <laughs> well, let's scream in theaters now. Number five. Number five. Uh, since we're talking about the Gilded Age, I want to tell you about a little, a, a short documentary. Not a little one. It's a short documentary because, you know, it's the Academy Awards time of year. And there are two awards, one for the feature documentary one for the short documentary. And over the past few years, the short documentary competition from being something that everyone ignored has become really hot. And Netflix and all, you know, the big players put in millions of dollars, far more than they ever paid to make the films in the first place, to promote them and do screenings and what have you. So the other day, I was really uh, thrilled and honored and touched to be asked to do a conversation with Ryan White, the director of Coded, The Hidden Love of J.C. Leyendecker. This is a short film, and J.C. Landecker was the guy who created the advertising campaign. For the Arrow for shirts. Oh, my God. Arrow yes. Shirts. Oh, my God. I am obsessed with these, with those 1900, the, that age yes. of the, the advertisements of the hottest men on the planet. Absolutely. I masturbate you got it to wrong. those cartoon characters all the time. Well, now you can go watch this short film on Paramount Plus, and you can jack off. You know, <laughs> endlessly. J.C. Landecker. Yes, Dan. Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm jumping in. Go ahead. Tell, tell, the, tell the story. Tell, tell about the Beautiful ads. illustrator artist. And he created the Arrow Shirt Man. And Arrow Shirts in, I think it was uh, 1899, went from being just another brand of shirts to the hottest brand in the marketplace. And his, if you haven't seen his work before, 
it's very much of the Gatsby era. It is the guilt, it is the roaring 20s, you know, that that, that sort of captures that essence. Um, it, there are all these very... impossibly gorgeous, they're drawings of impossibly gorgeous men wearing these shirts. And basically a little context is right before that was the Gibson girl phase in which there were the, the, the Gibson women were these idealized women, draw, you know, with illustrations of women that every woman wanted to be. And this is sort of the, the man that every man wanted to be. A little it bit was kind that. of the beginning of Photoshop and Facetune. Keep going. Uh -huh. I, well, actually, you're not far off there. You know, he would do these tableaus of like a man playing tennis and a woman and another man. And the two men would be looking at each other. Very homoerotic. Yes. Very coded. That's why it's called coded. And the other thing is, James, he Charles Beach was his lifelong partner. And he well, met so him he when he came he to model. For, he, he met Charles Beach when he came to model for him. And basically every man thereafter that he drew was a version of Charles Beach. So the wow. arrow, the man in the arrow shirts is the same guy. Drew oh. Again and again and again. So romantic. So, so basically he knew that he was he was co he was coding for other homosexuals out there Ab at a time when there was then that was just not done. Like nobody knew. He was well, drawing those illustrations for you. James. I yeah. think the codedness worked in the sense that I think people of all sexualities responded to these beautiful models in these arrow shirts and wanted it. It makes me think a little bit of Calvin Klein and the Marky Mark campaign. You know, well, because that was very, very every yeah, every every male, every designer has taken a page out of this and knows that if you make it gay, then you'll you'll get <laughs> you'll get the eyeballs. Well, he was ahead of all that. He became incredibly yeah. rich. Um, very, lived a very great Gatsby lifestyle, had huge parties, and then it all came to an end. And that is what is so fascinating. Two things happened. Norman Rockwell came along and was a real fanboy of J.C. Leyendecker. And Norman Rockwell just said, oh, I just want to make people happy. And he drew those cutesy things that kind of took over. Leyendecker was fired from his main job, the Saturday Morning Post, and Rockwell oh. took over. And it's interesting that we know about Rockwell, but J.C. Landecker, his story is kind of not erased, but much less told. And that's partly because of this. When the stock market crashed in 1928, there was also a huge backlash against gays and lesbians. It happened in Hollywood, you know, with the movies. They drove the gays and lesbos out of the movies. You had the, the what was it, the code, the movie code yeah. came in. But it was interesting. It was a global retrenchment because at the same time, Germany was on the cutting edge of gay rights. And at the same time, you know, the Reichstag was the about Weimar to vote and all of that. Yeah. Gay rights, right? And then in comes Hitler and that's the end of all that. But I, I just thought it was a well, fascinating but, wait, wait, but it does sort of seem that the difference between Leyendecker and, and Rockwell mm -hmm. is that there's so, Rockwell embodies that right-wing Republican. This is yes. the fantasy of how we want family to be. And we don't, you know, and, and we're going to push out anything that is a, a little suspect. You got it on the nose. That's exactly right. There was this sort yeah. of, not libertarian, but this live and let live feel about life. Hollywood was very gay. Germany was very gay. And it all came crashing down in a huge backlash. And you have this sort of this other vision, this other fantasy coming to the uh -huh. front of sort of Norman Rockwell. Okay, that's which, fascinating. Absolutely. It's a great film, tragically. So that, you know, no more work, lived in obscurity, died, told Charles, his lover, to destroy all his work. Oh, oh. which he did. And fortunately, in the attic of his studio, there's a trunk that they missed. And that was found oh. years later. And that's basically all the work we have of his in terms of original work. Because who knows what was destroyed? And this is yeah. this is a story that curses so many gay artists and people that they, living in a different time where it wasn't acceptable to be gay, they sort of participated in their own erasure. You know, and so you, much there, there was no thought to in 40 years, this will be, you know, th there was no nostalgia cycle back then right. that people realized that they had a, would have a legacy. So they thought that they were just over and done and nothing was ever to be done with. It's just so sad and tragic. Yes. yes. You can watch Coded, JC, The Hidden Love of J.C. Leyendeck. It's actually streaming now on Paramount+. Plus. I will watch it tonight. I'm so excited. 
Well, that's good. And while you do, James, will you also watch Explant, Michelle Visage's journey with her breast implant? Oh, hell again? No. Again? Hell! You have to watch it again? <laughs> no, uh, yes. No, I'm very, I, I love that. I, it's, it's so beautifully done. Um, coming up next week, uh, we'll take a quick break, but I just want to tell you, RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the world debuts on well, Wow Presents Plus. I have a question. It's a wow celebrity birthday. Her song just closed a recent episode of And Just Like That, which, Tom, I guess you wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> she has collaborated with the likes of NKOTB, Jordan Sparks, Naughty by Nature, Boys to Men, Drake, Kesha, Charlie XCX, et cetera, et cetera. Happy 43rd birthday to... We'll have the answer for you right after the break. You're listening to The Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. And welcome back to The Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with James and Tom and Blake. You had a question? I did. It's a wow celebrity birthday. Her song just closed a recent episode of And Just Like That. And she's collaborated with New Kids on the Block, Jordan Sparks, Naughty by Nature, Boys to Men, Drake, Kesha, Charlie XCX, et cetera. Happy 43rd birthday to... Well, I was going to say it could only be longtime WoW celebrity, Christine, Christine W. But that doesn't... 43 doesn't sound right. What do you think, Fenton? I, I know it's not Britney Spears because her birthday is in December. <laughs> <laughs> Tom? Uh, it's not Kim Petras because she's too young. I don't know. You're is stumping. it Shangela? It's Shangela, isn't it? What if I told you she had a gun and she's from New Orleans? Oh, oh, of course. I did not realize. Big Frida, of course. Big Frida. Happy birthday to Big Frida. Oh. I don't think of Big Frida as having an age. I don't think Big Frida came from Earth. I think <laughs> Big Frida came down from heaven and is an eternal being. So that, that's She looks so thinking. fabulous on All Stars this last week. So gorgeous. good. Really gorgeous. Yeah. All right, we're counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow, and we've reached number four. Number four. This is number four. It should be number one. It should be 10987654321. This is what's happening in the United States, around the world. It's the most important thing. Please pay attention. Stop what you're doing. Wordle. <laughs> <laughs> Wordle. Everyone and their mother is doing Wordle. We are so, this is my thing about connection. We are so desperate to be connected that we, everyone's sharing their, their, they, you know, and for those of you who don't know, and you know, Wordle I don't know, is, I don't know anything about Wordle. I have, Word, you Wordle is a it? game. It comes at one puzzle a day and it takes you like a few minutes to do. It's six blanks. It's like playing um, uh, uh, Wheel of Fortune a little bit. And then you put, you put in your own first word. It'll tell you if, if the letter's green, it means that you're, it's in the right place, right letter. If it's yellow, it means the letter's in the word, but it's not in the right place. If it's gray, it means it's not in the word. Now, so you have, yeah. if you watch the Game Show Network in the early aughts or mid aughts, you might know this as lingo. It yes. was a show on uh, Game Show yeah. Network where it so, was basically the same thing. So you have six chances to get it right. And, you know, I, I always try to put in like letters with S's and L's, you know, very like, uh, you know, try to use the, the off, off words. And then you go down and if you get it in two, which I have a couple times, you feel so like you have just cured cancer. You're like, oh my God. And people <laughs> just feel like they have to share it. And everyone's feed who's not doing Wordle is like, why are you polluting my feed with your Wordle score? By the way, there's only one puzzle and we all have the same puzzle. And so you can't tell people, you can't like take a screenshot of your word because that's everybody's word for the day. And then Randy, I was just talking to Randy Barbado about this. Randy's father is totally into Wordle. And he's like, why aren't there more than one a day? And that is the trick of it, right? It's just one and then you want more and then you're jonesing all day. So like a good uh, addict, I, I Google for more. You know, it's such a phenomenon. Everyone's copying it. And there's a couple of things, but you know, not as good. But there's one that's e that's so good. It's called Swerdle. Swerdle. <laughs> and it's four blanks and it's four letter words. So if you have children <laughs> in the car, cover their ears. So you start off by putting like, you know, fuck. And it's like, mm, fuck. 
uh, uh, you know, and it's so much fun. It's so satisfying. <laughs> it's the perfect aperitif for whatever the for 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 Wordle, which is serious, and then Swerdle, which is just disgusting. And, and you're at, people walk behind you and they see the word, you know, you know. Michelle well, Visage is really, hooked on that, isn't she? You've hooked Michelle Visage. We're on all we're all hooked. RuPaul is on it now. Everyone's on it. But um, wait, you can't go back to like the day before or two days. Like you no, know, it's, the one it's, that is that day. It's that day, 24 hours. You, there's a little clock at the bottom that says your new Wordle will come in one hour and 30 seconds. You're like, come on, come on. Somebody, uh, Natasha Leone uh, tweeted today, Randy was telling me, she's like, I wake up at 4 a.m. because that's when the new Wordle drops. So <laughs> if you haven't done it, you need to do it. It is, it, it, I'm, I'm ex not exaggerating. It feels like everyone's doing it and it's caught on like in the last two weeks. Well, has, has, who invented it and has that person made a billion dollars and do we know who it is and- I'm sure it's a Russian bot or a Chinese bot, and I'm about to be poisoned on a plane, but I don't <laughs> care because it's that satisfying. Anyway, I'll, I'll do more research about it and come back to the group, but that's, I'm just, I'm too busy playing Wordle to find out where Wordle comes from and Swerdle. Awesome. Wordle, Swerdle. Yes. I mean, <laughs> James, number three. Number three. Well, I'm keeping along with uh, what we've been talking about. I need to talk about. Uh, Havana syndrome, which has been in the news a lot lately, and you talk about Russian poisoning and everything like that. Uh, uh, I want to explain a little bit about what it is because um, the CIA just came out with this new lengthy uh, thing about it. It is an unexplained psychogenic illness, which has been affecting military officers, CIA operatives and spies and diplomats around the world. And what it is, is first of all, you suffer from, there's a giant screeching sound or a clicking sound that you hear. And immediately you are affected by vertigo, extreme case of vertigo, dizziness, nausea, a uh, ringing in the ear. Um, you throw up. Uh, it's um, many are saying that it's the Russians who are doing concentrated microwave blasts uh, to these people. And um, uh, I'm here to tell you today that I have been a victim of Havana what? syndrome twice, twice, once, Three years ago, I was driving and I heard a giant crashing sound and the world started doing this. It was tilting back and forth. It was extreme vertigo. I had to pull over. I had to lie down for 30 minutes. I threw up. I had to get, I was able, after 30 minutes, I was able to drive. I shouldn't have been driving. It, the world was still spinning. And I got to my sister's house and I laid down. And for the next like hour, I was just completely out of it. And then slowly I got together, but there was still a ring in my ear. Well, then it happened to me again about a year ago. I was in bed and all of a sudden I woke up to this crashing sound and I was like, had to get on the floor. I had to get off the bed and onto the floor because I just had to get as close to the ground as I could. The world was spinning. I managed to crawl to the bathroom and throw up. I don't know what it was. About half an hour later, it passed. Now, over Thanksgiving, it happened to my niece. I was seated next to her at dinner and all of a sudden she said, ah, ah, and like she had to get on the ground and she was nauseous and sick and the same thing happened. And I'm thinking to myself, well, and then, well, wait, then it happened to my mother about five years ago. She was at the gay pride parade and vertigo hit her and she had to, like, she was thrown to the ground. Now, the question is, why are the Russians targeting me and my family? And I'm wondering if maybe they were targeting me and they missed and got my niece because she was seated right next to me. What is going on with the Savannah syndrome? Has anyone out there in radio land experienced this as well? And if you, I'm not a Russian, I'm not a CIA spy. No, I know. I know. And I, I wonder if, because, you know, Havana syndrome is so cool because it started in Cuba, right? The first yes, time yes. that they noticed it. It, it was, it was, it was and the they diplomats thought it was... there and they all started experiencing the same uh, symptoms. And then it started happening at other diplomatic places around How the country. How come the world. there seems to be no fingerprints, though? Um, or does yeah. the CIA report reveal that? Like, uh, well, like no... the CIA report says that they don't think it's the Russians. But if the CIA says that it's not the Russian, that means it's the Russians, right? I mean, like, whatever the CIA says, you don't believe because they're lying. Obviously, they're the CIA. 
So it is the Russians, and the Russians are targeting me for some damn reason. It's that kind of insight into the CIA that makes you a dangerous man, James St. Well, James. that's just it. I think that perhaps <laughs> maybe the CIA is watching me. I have all sorts of reasons to believe that. Yes. But um, uh, And I now that you have you know, this huge platform with the WOW Report where millions and millions and millions of people tune in. And this radio show and word. podcast, I am just one of the most powerful people in media. <laughs> it's what it is, I think. But I promise you, it wasn't drugs. I was not on drugs I, any of those times that it happened. Or maybe it's brain cancer. I don't know. But for some reason, I have experienced these symptoms. Well, we will keep you updated as this <laughs> unfolds about the Havana <laughs> syndrome. That's not very... You're trying well, to... Well, how I'm do I write a little more sympathy? <laughs> more as the story what? develops. Thank you, James. It's not like streaming now on HBO. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Making your dick sick, which I <laughs> right. Somebody's been painting my underwear with uh... just the front. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Hey, do you remember that song? Um, we didn't start the fire, Billy Joel. Yeah, sure. We didn't start the fire, and, and you know it's got those rapid fire verses that lists all those things. My friend Katie Puckrick in the UK has partnered up with Tom Fordyce, who's a sports reporter, and together they're doing a podcast called We Didn't Start the Fire. And every episode takes one of those things from that list in chronological order and talks about it. So for the first, you know, it's Harry Truman is the first episode, Doris Day, Harry Truman, Doris Day, Red China, Johnny Ray. And it just goes, it goes, and so it goes wow. through it in that what way. Is that? That is so, so gosh genius. darn clever. That is amazing. It, it really is genius. Uh, they're up to episode number 50. There'll be wow. in total 118 episodes. And it really does bring attention to this song. Yes, Tom. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Keep going. No, 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 no. I just it, think it, we, need to do the, we need to do Madonna's Vogue. Keep going. <laughs> but one episode. <laughs> so, no, uh, uh, Betty Davis, M. Oh, Monroe, D. Greta Garbo. Okay, let's do that. Let's do yeah. that. Um, but it's it really made me. I pulled out the lyrics, and they're really good. Just this list of things. Billy Joel wrote it in chronological order. So you start with Harry Truman, and then you come up to mm, China's under martial law, rock and roller, cola wars. Cola wars is the last thing. Um, but I didn't know the background of the song, which is that um, Joe, he had just turned 40 and he was hanging out with Sean Lennon, who was 21. He'd just turned 21 and Sean was complaining about what a terrible time it was to be 21. And, and Billy Joel said, yeah, I remember when I was 21. Uh, it was pretty awful, too. You know, we had Vietnam, drug problems, civil rights. Um, and then the friend, <laughs> Sean Lennon said, yeah, yeah, it's different for you because... Everybody knows nothing happened in the 50s. <laughs> and Billy Joel was so incensed. He sat down and wrote this song of everything that happened from 1948 till, I think, 1989, which was when the show, were, uh, the song was released. You um, know, I think that I've seen um, either he did, an up, he did an updated version in which he went to the 2000s, or I've heard other people have done like a sequel version. <clears throat> that's sort of fascinating that brings us up to the present now. And, uh, but it is, it's just, it's the more you listen to it, the more, you know, fascinating it is. And the hilarious thing is he thinks it's a terrible song. He thinks it's pretty crap, but you know, and, and people have asked him to do, to do extended versions. He's like, no, no, it's oh, not oh, he didn't do, I, I guess someone else has done extended versions. Uh -huh. funny. But he such, a brilliant, such a brilliant idea for a podcast. And Katie Puckrick is so smart and clever and brilliant. I really adore her. Um, and Tom's pretty good too, you know. And Katie's had such a fascinating career. She was did this big TV show in England called The Word that was massive cult viewing. Then she was also a dancer with the Pet Shop Boys. And she's a really interesting person. All right, let's go on. I think we've got to take a break. Yeah, we do. I will just tell you, DragCon is returning to the LA Convention Center uh, Omicron permitting May 13th, 14th, and 15th, 2022. Get your tickets at rublesdragcon.com. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, reveal the number one thing this week that made us go, wow, you're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. 
and welcome back. I'm Fenton here with James and Tom. We've reached number one. The number one thing that made us go wow this week, sadly, is number one. It's a sign of the times. We are losing so many iconic celebrities that we can't even do with them one at a time. So, so with all due respect, I want to start off by saying rest in perfection meatloaf. Now, I know there's controversy around uh, COVID and whether he was anti-vax. I just have to say my relationship with meatloaf happened in the 1970s with an eight-track tape of Bad Out of Hell in my parents' uh, <laughs> Impala in the garage listening to it because all I had was an eight-track tape from a friend. We didn't have a player in our house land or car. And that album if you grew up in rural new hampshire if you had your first sexual encounters in the backseat of a car where it was cold and the beer was warm meatloaf was your savior and your shakespeare and your f, f. scott fitzgerald and and all that is true and for that contribution thank you meatloaf i hope whatever well also meat meatloaf in Rocky Horror Picture Show is seminal to me because that's just, I mean, he he really did. He, you know, and he had an incredible career and he had an incredible voice and he was an incredible presence. And by all accounts, he was a really chill, very cool guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I wanted to say rest in perfection, Terry Mugler, Manfred Terry Mugler, uh, the French designer who was so just, I mean, his some of the most amazing designs of all time, just really really very very interesting man he was a party person he went out all the time in new york and london and paris everybody knew him he was um gregarious and his designs were outrageous and fabulous and he worked with the best of the best he um uh had a number of accidents later in his life and he had a lot of facial reconstruction that just completely changed who he was and he changed his name after that and uh, just a really interesting man. And I also wanted to say, rest in perfection, um, Peter Robbins, who was known to a generation, generations of kids as the voice of Charlie Brown in the Aww. 1960s and 70s. He died uh, of suicide at age 65. He <clears throat> was um, phased out when he turned 14 and his life sort of um took a downward spiral. He had some a lot of mental health issues and was in and out of jail and mental uh, institutions and the like. And um, uh, it's very sad because to me, that voice, I, I hear that voice and I know exactly. Mm. It, it just takes me back to a time and a place. And um, just on that note, I want to say that if you or anybody you know is having thoughts of suicide or is feeling depressed, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. Well, thank you, James. And, and thank you, Tom. I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week. Uh, but thanks for tuning into The Wow Report here on Radio Andy. You can catch previous episodes on our YouTube channel, Wow Presents. And otherwise, we'll see you same time, same place next week. Uh, until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow. <laughs>